Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has confirmed media reports that he's, he's on his way to the United States. He's expected to meet with U.S. President Joe Biden and to address Congress. It'll be his first trip abroad since the Russian invasion. It's thought that Washington will use the visit to announce the delivery of more advanced weapon systems to Kyiv. President Zelensky has taken every opportunity to appeal for more money, aid and military support since the start of the war in Ukraine, either when hosting world leaders in the capital, Kyiv, or when addressing governments and international institutions with his face, appearing almost daily on multiple screens. In almost 10 months of fighting, though, he hasn't left the country until now. Zelensky is due to meet with his U.S. counterpart Joe Biden in Washington and address Congress. It's a visit fraught with security concerns. In a letter sent by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi on Tuesday, members of Congress were urged to be present in person on Wednesday night's session for a very special focus on democracy. The trip comes a day after the Ukrainian president's unannounced visit to the front line to meet troops in the city of Bakhmut. There, he handed out awards to soldiers and was gifted a Ukrainian flag, making this statement just moments later. The enemy is increasing its army and our people are braver and need more powerful weapons. We will pass it on from the boys to the Congress, to the President of the United States. We are grateful for their support, but it is not enough. But Washington is one of Ukraine's biggest supporters, and what happens here now could be crucial, with U.S. politicians preparing to vote on a spending package that includes around $45 billion in emergency assistance to Ukraine. Well, our Washington correspondent, Michaela Kufner, told me more about today's surprise visit. Well, as we heard from a senior official of the administration, um, we can expect an in-depth strategic discussion uh, during a sit-down between President Biden and Vladimir Zelensky, where they want to talk about the current situation, but also potential steps ahead. Um, very concretely, we also heard from that official there would be $2 billion worth of assistance, fresh assistance announced. And also, and that's quite key, uh, one Patriot air defense uh, system is due to be delivered. Um, Ukrainian troops are due to be trained on that. And that is seen as a potential game changer, not just for the defense of Ukraine, who's been asking for this for a very long time, but also in relations with Russia, with there having been a pushback coming out of Moscow, a warning even not to use this Patriot system, which would become a legitimate target, uh, the Russians say, and once again stresses that this is a proxy confrontation indeed uh, with this modern system uh, due to be used in the future. It's also seen as a show of solidarity and can also uh, well be understood as a, a very much due thank you to the US public, which has already sent uh, some 50 billion worth, a uh, billion US dollars worth of assistance towards Ukraine and is expected in this budget that's due to be decided on in Congress to do the same again. Yeah, great news for, for, for both uh, leaders, uh, I suppose, with the, the US being Ukraine's most important uh, backer in this conflict. It, absolutely. It's uh, good news for Vladimir Zelensky, but also is seen as something that was very much expected in Congress. A new Congress is due to come in in January. We don't expect the support overall to completely fade, but there is an element of public fatigue, despite the fact that the majority of Americans is in favour of assistance towards Ukraine, of supporting Ukraine, and whether that support uh, will come as thick and fast as it has done over the first 10 months of conflict, that is still an open question. And that's why this budget being passed and 
getting Congress to pass this swiftly and decisively is so key for Vladimir Zelensky, as much as U.S. President Biden continuing to rally the international community, that's the terminology that's being used here, um, also to continue to do whatever it takes. Uh, this is the pledge by President Biden, as well as not doing anything without Ukraine, not talking right. over Ukraine's head. And this will be the symbolism towards Russia. Thank you for that. Uh, Michaela Kufner in Washington. All right, let's uh, bring in uh, our Ukraine correspondent, Max Zander, who's in uh, Kyiv on this. Welcome, Max. Uh, how's this news being received there? Yeah, Phil, of course, this is big news. The Ukrainian president uh, leaving the country for the first time since the beginning of the war. And many here in Ukraine um, are waiting for more assistance, especially assistance in weapons deliveries from the West and hoping that now this visit uh, perhaps can uh, help secure this now. A lot of people at the same time are also asking why is Zelensky in person traveling to the U.S.? Why is he putting himself at risk? Why is he not talking over the phone to President Biden or addressing Congress via video link um, as uh, these things have been done in the past? But to disregard this is as a wider part of uh, his strategy to boost uh, um, attention for the cause, and that is to secure air defense weapons. We just heard um, the Ukrainians have been pushing for the Patriot system, a U.S.-made very powerful system, system that could uh, add an extra layer of security to the Ukrainian air defenses. Um, as you know, the Ukrainian cities uh, all, over the ci all over the country, uh, not just uh, Kyiv, but Odessa and, other, and all the other parts of the country have been heavily attacked by Russian rockets. And um, yeah, air defense is, is dire needed at the moment. And this is one of the hopes of uh, that this might be an outcome of the trip. Okay, so talk us through the, the latest there in Kyiv and indeed in eastern Ukraine, Max. Right, so um, just a couple of days ago, uh, on the night from Sunday to Monday here in Kyiv, we saw another attack with the Iranian-made kamikaze drones. Um, ever since uh, in the following days, the situation regarding uh, the power outages, regarding the outages of the centralized heating, uh, seemed to have become more difficult. Russia is uh, targeting the civilian infrastructure, uh, as you know. And um, right now, if you walk the cities of Kiev at night, um, the streets are only eliminated by the few cars that are still going, by pedestrians with their, their flashlights. You have 20, 30 floor buildings um, that are completely pitch black in the dark. So Kiev at night really seems like a ghost town in, uh, in, in some parts. Um, if you look further east, um, there's still some fierce fighting going on along the front line. Um, the Russians have been for weeks and months trying to take the town of Bakhmut. There is intense fighting going on. Russians and Ukrainians are engaging in trench warfare in artillery duels. We visited the area and spoke to some soldiers there on the ground. They were telling us that uh, Russians are sending their mobilized, recently mobilized troops as, as in, in, in waves to tire the Ukrainian defensive positions and then only to send more specialized forces later on. So there's really intense fighting that goes at a huge human cost at the moment, but not just soldiers are impacted, the civilians too. Um, when we were there, we witnessed the aftermath of a missile attack on the city of Kramatorsk. And um, as uh, uh, hard uh, that is, uh, it, it was also incredible to witness uh, how civilians are dealing with these kinds of attacks. There is quite some um, resilience there, I have to tell you, uh, but see for yourself, uh, we brought this report. The front line is more than 30 kilometers away from this town in eastern Ukraine. But every now and then, Kramatorsk itself turns into a war zone. Now, this is the aftermath of last night's attack. A Russian rocket landed here at about 20 minutes past midnight. Um, most likely, a Russian surface-to-air missile was used, quite inaccurate, but at the same time, extremely powerful. Just have a look. A single round with a devastating effect. The blast wave took away the roof of the neighboring college and blew out every window in the vicinity. The volleyball field inside the gym, once the training ground of the Kramatorsk First League volleyball team, now covered in endless shards of glass. Power lines too have been destroyed. Since the beginning of fall, this has been part of the Russian strategy across the entire country. 95% of recent strikes have targeted civilian infrastructure. I don't know why they are shooting into the city, why they are trying to injure our citizens. Their aim is not to liberate anyone, as they would put it. 
They want to kill Ukrainians and destroy our nation. Nobody was killed in this attack. But Natalia Kushnaryova lost everything she had. She shows us the ruins of what just hours ago had been her home. I'm nearly always here. But when it happened, I was away visiting my family. Natalia knows that despite everything, she got extremely lucky. For the last few years, I lived here alone with my younger son. But he died in January. And then the war started in February. His room was the first one you entered. And I slept here. Natalia doesn't know yet what she will do. She is 67, a pensioner, with no other place to go. But even if she did, she says, she wouldn't want to leave Kramatorsk. Outside, the cleanup continues. Soon, the road will be repaired. By the evening, power will be back. Despite the horrors and hardships, Ukrainians have learned to keep calm and carry on.